Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Wherever you're located. Good something. Good right? supper. Good supper. Good, <laughs> good morning to some people. Uh, welcome. Welcome to Homemade. What is up, everybody? Hi, Miriam. Oh, Debbie's got holiday decorations up. I love oh, yes. it. Way to rock it. Beth Wilson, Fish, Jonathan Yard. Hi, Bill. Hey, Jonathan. Hi, Bill. Hi, Lena. Hi, Jonathan. Lena, so good talking to you yesterday. Oh Diana, gosh. CBU Education, Kate, Pamela. You guys, so good to see you. It's Thursday. It's nearing the end of the week. Almost there. Uh, and we are, today we're whipping up a recipe that I feel like could not be a better weekday recipe. A great weekday recipe. Yeah. We're doing a classic, old school, but in a new school way, new mushroom school way. risotto. Mm. You, you're a risotto fan or no? It's a carb, so yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to ask. That yes, was I good. Am. That was good. <laughs> uh, yeah, right me there. too. Me too. So real quick, if you are new to Homemade, we are so thrilled you're here. I'm Joel Gammon. I'm the head Welcome. chef and founder. This, to my left, is... Chef Jenny. Hi, everyone. I'm the newest chef. Oh, no. Chef Kai is You're the second newest, newest chef. Yeah. Second newest chef. We got a, not a lot of new blood, but Jenny is amazing. She teaches a lot of our classes. And if you're new to our Molto classes, we are showing this amazing, I know this might be new to a lot of people, but this amazing appliance. This is called the Molto by Cooking Pal. And I cook in this while Jenny does the exact same recipe, but Seven. more standard pots yeah. and pans. And we like to kind of show the differences and... We get lightly competitive. A lightly. A skosh? Is a, sc a skosh a good skosh. descriptor? A we're, skosh? I think we're, it's like everyone's waiting for a Jerry Springer moment, like a chair to come out yeah. and just like it's going to be really bad, but it hasn't happened yet. Not it's yet. It's like our fifth cooking pal class. Give it a couple more and we'll get <laughs> let, let holiday stress really sink in and then oh. it'll start. You guys will see it unfold in front of you. Yeah, yeah. But the, the idea here is that this is totally interactive. So you can talk to myself and Chef yeah. Jenny in real time as long as we can see your yeah, face thanks. and you're willing to share your screen. So just click the little camera. We want to see you anyways. Yeah. Um, but you can always raise your hand and ask questions. If that's not your thing, we have Chef Kaya in the chat. Chef Kaya is our newest chef. Chef Kaya, the new, our newest chef, is yeah. in the chat. She's the best. She's a total best. she's in charge. Yeah, she's great. So she's in the yeah, chat. Yeah, tell her hello. Absolutely tell her hello. And tell us where you're coming in from. We always like to kind of see where in the world you are beaming in from. We but had Alaska yesterday. Love that. I right? love that. I love when I see Australia I or Japan. I don't know if I'm Midori's very on, but excited. we have some we have some really nice people in Japan who like to come Ooh, in. So La Jolla. La Jolla. Jelly. 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 Wow, humble brag. <laughs> I mean, I want to be there right now. Amazing. I love it. Well, I'll tell you, know? you one thing about risotto that I feel. So first of all, I am a risotto. Uh, it's a religion to me. I'm gonna call that out. It was it's a religion to me, maybe because I studied in Italy. Maybe because I just love it so much. I find that risotto, out of every dish in the kitchen, is the most flexible. Yes. Yeah. And when I That's worked That's a great in, way to describe it. Yeah. And when I worked in kitchens and restaurants, I don't know if you've ever done this or if anyone else has done this, but you try out for a day sometimes in a restaurant and the chef will say, hey, go into the fridge and make me clean something. Out the clean yeah, out the fridge. And you have got like 30 <laughs> minutes. And I know that they were going to do this. And so I knew, always knew... Risotto is in my back pocket. Mm. If they have carrots, you can make a carrot risotto. Butternut squash, a butternut squash risotto. Chocolate risotto, I've done it. it yeah, oh, it's deli rice pudding, dude. It's good. It's good. So risotto is so, so versatile, and I think it's so every day. So I'm really excited to kind of take you guys through the ins and outs. Um, I want to call out, we're going to go kind of step by step. Again, mm -hmm. I'm going to be using the Molto and showing the fact that literally this saves up to 10 different appliances. Yeah. So Jenny's going to be doing a little bit of appliances we'll talk about, but I really want you guys to kind of see the difference and feel free to ask questions at any time. Also, if this is interesting to you, you can go on their website. We're going to put it in the chat. So it's cookingpal.com, and this is the Molto, and you get $80 off by using the code COOKINGHM. Yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry, gift with HM. Gift with HM. Yeah, gift with HM. Thank, thank you, Cooking Pal. We love Cooking we need, Pal. We need all the discounts we've all, right now. We've all become converts. We're all big fans. Cyber Monday was intense. Yeah. I need all the coupons. That's thank what you. it is. So Cooking Pal, just for the record, I have this tablet, and it tells me what I need to measure out. The first thing that's amazing about this is it saves you the scale. So you can mm. use this by popping up this lid, and you can literally put ingredients into this bowl here whether it's flour, sugar, liquids, and it will literally scale yeah. for you. Or I was using this earlier, yeah, so 
Yeah, which is I great. Mean, I yeah. love the skill, but it, I was a little jelly. You can just <laughs> measure it straight in there. It's kind of nice. So scale saves you one appliance, which is amazing. But we're going to go to the first step here. And again, Jenny's cooking more conventionally. So if you're cooking along, make sure to kind of listen closely to Jenny. So first and foremost, we, uh, we have some parsley and we have mm -hmm. some Parmesan. And we're going to kind of grind those two things together mm -hmm. to make like a little topping and a finisher. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. So you've got some parsley and parmesan. parmesan. I'm going to put mine right into the molto. You are throwing yours where? I'm going to throw mine into the food processor back here, guys. In the food processor. You could, of course, chop it by hand, but I don't know. You don't really chop cheese by hand, I guess. Mm. So this kind of breaks up the cheese and allows it to melt more evenly. Do you need to do this? No, but it's a nice step. So I'm going to throw on my lid. You're throwing on your lid? Throw it on my lid. All right. Beautiful. And then I just hit start. Okay. This is grinding and it's peasy. It's pretty. It is really pretty. I'm kind of loving the color. Look at this. Feels very festive. Yeah. Look at that. Look at mine. That is awesome. I'm wow, that put it in a bowl, smells so really good. <laughs> it smells Did you get really that wolf? good. Okay. New favorite thing obsession. Okay. Grind your Parmesan with. Parsley, look at the color. Ooh. That is stunning. That over a pasta would be gorgeous. So just for the record, mm, 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 we're mm. all super fans of Chef Jamie. Chef Jamie is <gasps> Molto and Cooking Pal's chef. He develops all the recipes. He pumps out five recipes a week that gets uploaded on this thing. And this connects to this. So this commands step by step. So you can't really mess up. It's kind of a foolproof way of cooking. So Jamie loads them in. His team takes pictures and he tests all the recipes. He's kind of a badass. Yes, you get like a recipe book when you get this, which yeah. I kind of, which is super dig. His recipes are really good. We've made over dozens of them at this point of his, and just like obsessed. Yeah, we're obsessed. I would say sometimes we question Jamie because we're like, "What are you doing?" And then we do it, and we're like, "Why didn't we ever do it like this? why? Why?" He's this is this step is is that. So typically in a mushroom risotto. You saute the mushrooms. So at this point, you mm. can add oil to a pan. You can yeah. saute them up. Mm. Jamie calls for you to just simply grind the mushrooms, like into a paste. This, this step, honestly, when I was recipe testing this, blew my mind. Yeah, we were like, the, what? I think grinding it up and then adding in it later, it almost infuses and creates a mushroom broth because they're so ground up. Yeah. Like the rice just absorbs the flavor. And it saves Ooh. you a step of having yeah. to saute it, which pretty I, cool. kind of blew my mind. So I'm going to put uh, right. some button mushrooms. You're going to do I'm the same thing. Here, Food processor. Here. Easy peasy. And grind it up. And I want to take some questions after this, but I'm going to literally just turn it on. This has turbo mode, which kind of is amazing. So I just hit this. It's so fast. Okay, yours is a little faster than mine, but that's okay. Let's see. All right. Yeah, it basically pulverized it. But, I mean, you got the same thing. Mine just is... It's so powerful. This machine is <laughs> insane. I did frozen yogurt with this the other day, and it was... You nutty. did? Yeah. Nutty. Nutty. All right, so we're going to scrape out mm. our ground mushrooms. We want to start taking some questions. So, Kaya, anything in the chat... Team, what do we got out there? Not really many questions, actually. Have you guys all made risotto before? That's a good question. Yeah. If are you're not asking questions, we're going to ask you questions. Yeah. Are we risotto veterans? Diana has. All right. Yeah. I think, I don't know, um, Top Chef, all those chef competition shows, they, a lot of contestants will make risotto oh. and then get booted. Have you noticed that? Oh, that's why I kind of got a pain, like not pain, like a, a shock of nerves, because I'm like, oh no, that's the one where everyone. It's like how like every single time they make risotto, everyone like the judges are like, oh, okay. or like when someone grabs truffle oil on chops, right, and you're right, like, right. no, don't, don't do, do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> and the reality is, is that I think people think risotto is so easy to mess up. Um, it's rice, obviously, but you want to cook it to this al dente kind of toothsome point, which we're going to teach you about. Um, so we'll get there, but. All right, well, if there's no questions for you guys. We're going to move on to the next step. So mushrooms is ground. Oh, we got what kind of mushrooms? Oh, it's a great question. Um, you can go as fancy and crazy and wild as you want. If you like morels in the spring, chanterelles in the fall, those are the fancy, fancy one, hen of the woods, my takis. Yeah. I can name all the mushrooms. I'm from Seattle, so. I mean. 
there's a lot of mushrooms floating around, not just edible ones, but magic ones too. Oh. Not <laughs> that I'm a magic mushroom guy, but there's a lot of mushrooms happening. I have several more questions, but we'll do that <laughs> after class. That's fine. But then, I mean, honestly, <laughs> to me, I like a cremini, which is a baby portobello. I'm a cremini girl. Yeah. These are, the recipe calls for white, but again, this is a Chef Jamie wizard thing. He's like culinary Gandalf. I, we, we used the button last time. Was so flavorful. Yeah, yeah. The, bl- it the was button. So flavorful. Listen, there's a reason why it's the most popular there mushroom. It's very. It packs right. a punch and it's economical. All right. Kay. So next step is we have to peel and chop garlic and shallot. So we called for Kay. one shallot, three cloves of garlic. You're doing it by literally the old school <laughs> I'm knife. I'm doing the old school knife, which is totally cool. I simply just add my shallot and garlic right into my cooking pal, my molto. This is where and on we go. the pang of jealousy is starting. To yeah, this, this is, is where, where I start to talk a little. This is where it hurts a little. This is yeah. where it hurts a little. And I unlock this turbo. I'm going to try and put my microphone down so you guys can hear how loud this gets in a good way. There, I'm telling you, I've used every food processor in the world. I've never seen something with so much power. I this know. thing rushes. Anyways, I love it. Just for that alone. As a chef, we, we like we like the horsepower. Yeah. Okay, so you're just still on the peeling stage. Oh, ooh, shade. Getting a little, getting a little salty. A shade. <laughs> Savage, but But fair. you can see I'm there. I have a little mushroom in there. Who cares? Not the end of the world. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of olive oil. Oh, no, we use butter for this. We're using butter for this. You can use olive oil if you want. Yeah, you could totally use olive but oil. But, like, you know, it's December 1st. I, aren't we entering the month of butter? Shouldn't we just be embracing it? Wait, you it? have a month of butter? Well, every day is butter day for me. But I would say December is when I'm going to Costco and like buying in bulk at this time. Okay. Butter. Yeah, there's a lot you of baking will... happening. Oh, uh, sure. Let's let's say I'm baking. <laughs> 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 sure, that's fine. I love Guys, it. can you raise your hand if you're stocking up on butter right now? I can't be the only person. Don't like, let her feel alone because right I now mean, there's a lot thank of you, judgment. Debbie. I mean, it, it, come on, we're all. There's cookie swaps happening, mashed potatoes happening. I love good butter. So you can see I'm sitting here watching her. These are my favorite classes because I just get to watch (laughs) Jenny sweat while I get to hang out with the Molto. But (coughs) basically I'm taking half the butter we called, which is a couple of tablespoons, and I'm putting it right into the Molto. And I'm going to throw on the lid. And this is where it gets kind of crazy. Like, yes, this thing obviously chops. It looks like it's a blender or a food processor, even though it does both of those things and they're different. But this is where it starts to cook. So it's actually going to heat up. And I'm going to show you guys so you can see what I'm looking at. So it literally is showing me what I just did. You add the butter in. It tells you it's going to take two minutes. You press start. And it's sautéing. And it tells you exactly one minute, 55 seconds left. And it tells you how hot this is getting. So you can see it's 32 degrees, but it's going to start to climb. Ah, that's pretty, the temperature thing also is pretty cool. So, and yeah, I mean, the temperature thing is amazing. And I just think like risotto is one of those things that you do kind of have to babysit for a lot of different reasons. You have to keep stirring it to knock off the starch and the rice. We'll talk about that. But I don't know. Like at this point, I could go play with my kids. I could go do an email, and your pan's not even on yet, so I'm just going to help you out. I Every mean, once in a while, i got to help her catch up. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love she you. She jumped the second, the second there was an opportunity. But I do want to call it for Jenny, and she's doing an awesome job of it. When you do chop by hand, how her, one of her non-dominant hands is kind of anchored and on top, that's the safest way to do it. And when you're making risotto, you do want your aromatics to be as small as possible. Yeah. Like They always say, try and make it as small as the rice. Because you're not really tasting oh, those. Yeah. I like that. That's good, right? I haven't heard. Yeah, I really like that. That's an easy one to remember. Yeah. It's not that you're really All tasting right. it. They kind of melt away into the rice. Half this butter. Half that butter right in. Ooh, yours is already smelling Smelling really good. good. I know. It's smelling really good. I got exactly 42 seconds left. <laughs> there you go. You're doing right. great. <laughs> that, it was just, it's December 1st. <laughs> we what, we what have to mean? pace ourselves. <laughs> it's going to be a long month. I love it. So I want to pause for a second. Mm-hmm. I just want to recap. So if you're cooking at home, we ground up some Parmesan and some parsley in a food processor to get this beautiful mm. green color. Look at this thing again. Yeah. Crazy. And then in the same thing, we ground up, I used the molto, some mushrooms to make kind of like a duck cell is what it's called. We added... Uh, 
a little bit of butter and some shallots and garlic to a pan, in my case, the molto. And um, we are just starting to sweat that out. Now, this is really important in risotto. You do not want to get color on those. And Jenny is doing, she's Sicilian, so she knows how to make risotto. Let's see, I can't, we're not getting in there, but that's okay. I mean, can you hold it up for a sec? Yeah. yeah can you see? See how there's z no color? It's not caramelized shallots and garlic. It's a very low. What are you on temperature J wise? Low, I'm like on 180. Yeah. So, so I'm like just. Like four out of 10. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> Warming through, softening. These are the tr translucent. This is what we're looking for. We're not looking for deep, dark brown and caramelizing. Yeah. Although aromatic. A little aromatic. Aromatic. Now, it's already, smell it. It smells really good, actually. It smells really good. <laughs> but shallots, garlic, and butter. butter. Someone please make an air freshener. Send it to mm. me. I will put it in every room of my house. Yesterday, we established we needed a shirt that says, I'm fond of fond on it that's so cute we should totally do and that. then we need an air freshener of should we come out with butter? a t-shirt a homemade t-shirt by the way who wants <laughs> one of these cute patches <gasps> we're are. thinking about sending patches? this out to some of you regulars we want to they're really cute a okay. perfume carol i don't know a perfume of it i i, I mean no, i would be into that no i'm into it i'm into, I'm into it. it i smell like that half the time anyway so all right let me look at these guys so you can see look at the steam coming out of the molto it's Ooh. perfectly rendered, not caramelized. You don't have to think about it. I absolutely love that. It so, smells really good. It smells incredible. So at this stage, the recipe doesn't call for it, but I'm calling for it. All right, we're Sorry, going, Jamie. This is a note of Chef Joe Grogness, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> going rogue. So we're getting a little bit of white wine. So if you have some at home and you're cooking along, go grab some white wine or you can do like vermouth. Would be Ooh. really nice. Yeah. What about cherry? Yeah. Yeah? That'd be vermouth really the good. mushrooms? So we're going to start with the rice. We're going to talk okay. about the rice in a second, but I want to get it going. So go ahead and add your rice into your pan or your molto, whatever you're doing. You don't, no need to rinse it, none of that. And then a splash of that white wine. Don't Please. measure it, just go. Mm. Okay? Now, Good. this is a very important part in risotto making. This is called parching, or also known as toasting the rice. Can anyone tell me why this is so important? Not you, because you're a chef. Someone out there. Why is it so important to toast the rice? Brings the flavor out, Gail said. Par cooking it, eat it said. All good ideas. Nancy says flavor. Michael raised his hand. And Michael, you look like you're in a dungeon. You need to turn on a light. Michael, you're too, hi. you're too good looking to not. We gotta un, un, uh, unmute Michael. Let people see that money maker. We'll see. I am, I am in a dungeon. They're still doing the floors downstairs, so I hide up here with the dog. Fair enough. Be afraid. Fair enough. And I'm kind of afraid too. But uh, I'm guessing it's sort of a version of the Maillard reaction. So you might get some extra taste out of it, but that's a guess. It's a good guess. Okay. Everyone said flavor keeps uh. the grain intact. The mushy, yes. So it's not the Maillard reaction, which means caramelizing and browning. What it really is, is if you imagine Chef Jenny and me as a grain of rice, Ooh. by toasting us in a little bit of fat, in this case, a little bit of butter, we get a jacket around each individual kernel. And that way, that jacket protects it for us not sticking to each other. And it allows us to kind of slide off each other and stay individual. That's very important when making risotto. When you eat it, you want to taste the grains of rice. It should not just be baby food or mush. It should be individual little grains. Give me so, sticky lump. Although, yeah. can we please not just pass by that Michael knew Mylard reaction? I, I'm a food scientist. No one here who knows Michael is shocked. I'm no a food one scientist here knows. and snaps Michael. That was awesome. I love it. All right. So our rice has been in. It's been mixing it. Our wine has gone in. Now we are going with our stock. Now, typically with this rice, and again, we're going to talk about this rice. This rice needs four cups of liquid to yeah. one cup of rice. We're using Arborio rice. Short grain rice or sushi rice works perfectly. Mm -hmm. The fanciest one you'll find is carnaroli, which has a lot of starch. Say well, that again. Carnaroli. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That's the best I've ever said it. <laughs> and, um, and so we'll talk about why that's important, but we want to get four cups of liquid. And in this case, we're doing chicken stock. Or are we doing veggie stock? We're doing chicken stock today. It does smell like chicken stock. But you, you can could use, use veggie stock. Yeah, of course you could. 
So I'm going to literally measure out four cups just because mine's being busy right now. There's no way there's four cups of liquid. Maybe. You can do it. No, there so? is. Yeah. Let, I may need to top it off with some water. I feel like liquid's always so deceiving. Liquid can be deceiving. And by the way, I'm doing something I always say not to do, but when you're measuring liquid, always put it flat on the counter because when you're holding it, it doesn't stay stable and you don't get a good read. I need a little bit more here. Do you it. know I have no patience. I have four cups, but there's definitely not four cups left for you. I'll make it work. <laughs> you can go fill it up with a little liquid. Yeah, I'm going to add some water. All right, so then I'm going to literally add my four cups in. Oh, so you add it all at once. Exactly. <gasps> Whoa. So everyone into the Molto. I then take out this little, this is like a little measuring cup right here. So I'm going to let the steam come out. And this is where the magic starts to really happen. This is when you're like, okay, I might just buy the Molto to be a risotto cooker. <laughs> because you're gonna watch what Chef Jenny does, which it's really important when you're cooking on a stove, mm -hmm. your stock is warm, and you just start ladling it in a little at a time, right? So you wanna start doing it? Why is it important for it to be warm? Well, let me ask you guys. I know why, and I'm sure you know why, but why do you think Thank it's important for the stock to be warm when you add it into the rice? Throw it in the chat. Raise your hand. Sherry, I love you. Yes, it is, but it would be one batch of risotto. You could bake risotto over a long period of time, and it would pay itself off. Nice, Patty. Yes, Patty Weeks got it right off the bat. When you add cold stock to hot rice, it lowers the temperature of the pan. You don't want to do that. You want to keep mm. it hot. So by adding hot stock, it keeps the temperature up. Now, now that we're cooking couple things you're going to notice. Number one, can you hold that up to camera real quick? Absolutely. Okay. Do you guys see how milky this liquid is? That is starch that Jenny is knocking off with a wood spoon into the stock. That starch is on arborea rice. It's on short grain rice more so than long grain or basmati or jasmine rice. We want that because in a proper risotto, you never add cream, although no. it's very creamy. No, that's no. a cheat. It's a cheat, and it, I can tell it right off the bat. You never add cream. So we add stock ladle by ladle. In this case, I'm not. I just get to hang out because I'm using the Molto. But Jenny's going to go ladle okay. by, la by you ladle. You guys have a ticket to the gun show today, all right? Let's go. It's happening. Um, so she's going to go ladle by ladle, and she's going to start stirring. And that stirring agitates. It busts the rice, and it lets out that starch, which makes it creamy. This, the Molto, has a little mixer in there. So it's doing it for me. I don't have to sit here. Again, I can go do something else, forget about this, and the Molto is saving me so much time. So I just want to show you're doing a great job, Jenny. Thank I you. Also, well, first I want to pause there. Does that make sense to everybody? Let's about pause. The Let's check in. Yeah, that was a lot. Let's check in. All, all, we have some time. So right now, any little bit of risotto question, curiosity you have, yeah. Do it. Let's talk about it. It smells so good. I can't it smells even really it. good. Let's do it. This is your time. Nothing? Okay. Really? You guys are so quiet. This is a shocker, especially because I think risotto is such a common thing. But if anything comes up, let us know. So basically, we're cooking and stirring this at the same time, knocking out the starch. But I want you to know when it's done. So right now, Jenny, take a, take a bite. I'm going to give you a spoon. I'll take a bite, too. You're taking a bite, too. He, yeah. Don't set me up like that. You're taking a bite, too. Let's do okay. it. Ready? Mm. Mm. Oh, super al dente. Basically, rice sashimi we just had. Oh, rice sashimi. You could charge $20 for that. It's actually already that. really good, though. Um, the flavor What percentage is, really is that done in your mind? 20%? Ooh, that's generous. 10%? <laughs> 15. Let's go 15 split, we'll split the difference. All right. So if your individual rice kernel, the scissor kernel, is a loading bar on the computer, every single time you add liquid to it, it starts to load. So that percentage, 15%, 20%, you want to taste as you go. So Jenny's going to keep adding stock, and it's going to keep drinking that stock, sucking it up, and that loading bar goes more and more and more. You want to stop at 85%. 
And that 85%, trust me, I've taught risotto to so many people, is so different. So it's whatever's 85% to you. But to me, it should still kind of stick to your teeth a little bit. A little bite. And you should eat it and be like, wow, it's really good, but it, it just needs a little longer. Perfect. Stop at that point. No mush. Any, anything to add to that? Just no mush. No, it, no this, mush. Well, this is why I'm really jealous of this situation. I, when I did this recipe, I was like, this is the one that got me where I'm like, oh, I know. I, because we've done a lot in this. Though. Don't, don't walk away and liquid dump and think you could do that because that's not, you're going to get mush that way or you're going to get half burned, half mush. You really do have to Stay babysit. here and babysit. babysit and really stir and check in. Which so is fine. I, listen, I like I stirring. The, I like it. Fine. But it takes about, a perfect rule, it takes about 15, 16 minutes to make. And you got to stand there for 15, 16 minutes. Huh. I don't. I can go do emails. I can go watch the game. I can go do something. So it's up to you. But that's really, really important to kind of understand is how the rice soaks it in and the fact that there's so much starch that you're kind of knocking off. And that's what's making it creamier. Can you just show them your updated Absolutely. version? Chef Kaya, do we have a question? Yeah, Shake so if bit. someone wanted go. to add something like sausage to this, where yeah. would they add it in what part of the process? Ooh, so Great the question, question was just reiterate. Yeah. When do we add, we want to add a meat? Maybe a little pancetta, yeah. maybe a little sausage. When would you add it? That's a great question. Let's talk about all the different things you can add. So let's say you want to add meat, pork, sausage, beef, chicken, doesn't matter. I saute that first. So I mm. cook it through in a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper little cubes you obviously don't want to have a big piece little cubes chopped up yeah saute it put it in a bowl and then in that same pan you build your risotto because you're going to get a lot of that flavor from the meat that you cooked now you could do that with so many different things imagine butternut squash same exact way mm. or pumpkin that whole family pumpkin. zucchini is incredible sweet corn is stunning um I, again i love carrots I know that oh. sounds basic, but carrots is beautiful. A pea risotto with mint is really nice. I love me a little lemon basil in the summer to go with yeah. seafood. I think we have a lemon risotto coming out in a couple of weeks. Hey oh, all right. Don't we? I, I, I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to get through the risotto class, Chef no, I Joel. I love it. I love it. I love it. A couple it. weeks. What are you talking about? So um, we are going to get some fresh herbs. I do always love some fresh herbs in the risotto. We have some thyme here. Mm. I'm obsessed with thyme this time of year. That was a lot of times in a sentence. Mm. Say one more time. Time. <laughs> time of time in this time. I've got the time for it. So there you go. <laughs> so can you do it to that camera so people Absolutely. can see how you strip time off? Yeah. This is got this guy. Let's see. Ooh, can yeah. you see that? A little hard. You may want to come and over here. I think I'm going to have to come over. There you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So I always pinch at the top. Yeah. And then you can even if you have a lot of Guys, coming off the side, try to get it as clean as you can. Pinch from the top. Zip off it. Pull. There's all my little leaves. And then this guy looks like a little bare tree in the winter. Yep. So I've seen people literally go leaf by leaf, and you literally do exactly what Jenny said. Pinch the top, pull it down, and you're left with these little, little leaves. So we're going to just peel some thyme. You have kids, this is a good time to say, hey, come help me with dinner. It's impossible to screw this part up, just pulling the leaves off. Totally. And it's kind of funny, like, when I have herbs that I'm cooking with and I have the kids do it, I'm like, smell it. Doesn't that smell so good? Yeah. And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, that's rosemary. You're going to love it one You're day. You're going to one you know? day. Like, that's, one day. That's basil. You'll love it. One day. The other day they were doing fresh mint for me, and he goes, daddy, this smells like your gum. And I'm like, okay. Hey, that's, he's not wrong, though. No, he's not that's wrong. That's a pretty good... Yeah, yeah he's I not like wrong. that. It was cute. He's it a was future cute. chef. Yeah, he knows his stuff. He knows, he knows his, his stuff. stuff. Apparently, I was just told, I just had a parent-teacher conference with his teacher, and he's very young. And she said that he's obsessed with the little toy kitchen in their little classroom. <laughs> that's so cute. And he says his dad's his chef. His um, dad's a chef. Yeah, my really cute. My little ones call me a cooker. A cooker. <laughs> a cooker. I was like... Sure, sure, that's proper, sure. It's not proper English, but I'll take it. Yeah, All right. He, Jenna also says, why aren't you wearing your costume when I'm not wearing my apron? So, you know, kids do say the darndest things, but it's pretty cute. Um, all right, so I've got exactly one minute and 18 seconds oh, left. you do? Yeah. Do you oh. want to taste? This is a great time to kind of I taste and see where we are like, on that wow. percentage. Let's do it. Let's just see where we're at here. Can I put my spoon? Yeah. Where are you at? 
A 40? I was at the 45, 50. 45, yeah. 50? Yeah. Boy, this is what it is. This is how you do it. That flavor, though. This is though. how you cook. Now, one thing you haven't seen us add at all is what? Let's see. It's in every recipe in the world, really. Except maybe if you're watching it. Thank you, Miriam. Miriam, thank you. Yeah. Why the heck have we not added any salt yet? Throw it in the chat. Very strategic move. Mary Lou, you look focused. I think you know it. Pamela... Janet, why have we not added salt yet? Every recipe in the world would say add salt. Why no salt yet? Yes, Lisa, Michael, thank you. If you added salt in Guys. the beginning with all that stock, it would shrink down because it's going to obviously evaporate and concentrate, and you would have a salt bomb mm. on your hands. It would be way too salty. So, if you're going to buy chicken stock from the grocery store, number one is buy low, low sodium. sodium. Low that way it doesn't sodium. get too salty. Low and two, sodium. do not season until the very, very end. And we'll do that. At, that's true for stocks, soups, risottos. Yeah. Honestly, almost everything that's wet. All right, let's take a look. Mine is done. So, I just want to show you guys I have not stirred it at all. Still a lot of liquid left, which is good. It has a little bit more cooking time. But you can see how creamy it mm, got. Yeah, all that starch got released. I love it. So at this stage, we add our mushrooms. Okay. So everyone mushrooms in. Mushrooms in. And we add our thyme that we just picked. Did you even pick yours? Oh. <laughs> I was, I was, I thought I was done after that one little demo, guys. <laughs> Let me add, the, add these guys in. Everyone I in love the pool. It. All right, I'm cooking mine for another, it says eight minutes. So it, again, it kind of takes out the guessing game for you. So it was eight minutes for me on just the rice cooking. Now it's another eight minutes for my mushrooms and my time to kind of infuse. Let's go. Can you give them an update on yours? Do you want to yeah, just show it to the Let me get this guy. Get this guy mixed in. Here you go. Guys, can guys. Yeah, it's looking good. See how kind of it's still that. It, it's oatmeal. Yeah. It looks almost like oatmeal texture. Yes. Which is what you want. And it like, is. A lot of chefs will try and achieve that. And again, they use cream. They use far too much butter. All this. And I can tell immediately. So I'm going to show you guys when we plate when you know risotto has been tampered with. Because <laughs> tampered? I'll, I'll tell you one that thing. That is a strong word. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing. I, like, I will not order risotto out. I just won't. Oh, you won't. Nine out of ten of them don't do it right. I can make it better at home. The truth is with you guys, too. You can always make it so much better at home. That's why we're called homemade. We believe in that seriously. We really do. So I do want to kind of call out some of the things that the Molto really does save for you. So these are some of the functions that it saves. So first and foremost, we talked about it weighing. It grinds. It kneads. It poaches. There's a little basket in here, and it steams. steams. It sits on top here. It sautés. Um, Say it's, chop. It obviously chops. It blends. It sous vides. That's the you big You can one. set the temperature, fill this up with water, and literally sous vide steaks. And so a lot of people, because we've been doing this is now our sixth class, there's been yeah. a lot of interested people. I know some people have bought it. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Have you guys? Yeah. I want to see who's bought it. Is anyone who's on here right now, have you guys bought it? We'll see if anyone we'll speaks see. up. But bottom line is, it's so much more than, than you know one individual thing. So when you look at the price tag, of course it's a little high. It's close to $1,000. You get the $80 off with our code, right? Again, gift with HM. But you're saving about, I don't know, $3,000, $4,000 in all the other appliances you would be buying. Go buy a sous vide. That's $500. Yeah. Go buy new cookware to saute. That's money. Go buy a, you know, a food processor. That's money. So all of it adds up, and it's a no-brainer. And a lot of people are like, well, is this futuristic? Is this like the Jetsons? No, we always have to say no. I mean, yes, it is the future. But in Europe, in China, yeah. they've been cooking with machines like this where there's heat elements and everything for since the 50s. Yeah. This has been around, people. Believe I mean, it or not. I'll say, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Where was this when I had my first apartment? Yeah, or if you have a boat, <laughs> no or if you have a second room. home, or an Airbnb, like all that. Van life? A lot of people are doing van life these days. I have to try this cheese. I'm kind of like <gasps> dying. Are you? All right, well, if you're doing it. It's really good. I'm really into this technique. Yeah, I'm pulsing the parsley. I never do that. Mm. 
All right. We got time, a little bit of time for questions. We've got a couple minutes left. I also, what do we got? I also want to point out there, guys, you might have a lot of leftover herbs from Thanksgiving in your fridge right now. Thyme, sage, rosemary, all these things go together. Mushrooms, earthiness. Like, you want to play around and start chopping stuff up, throw them in. Yeah. I'm going to move this to the side here. Okay. But I'm totally with you. I think risotto is the perfect side dish. I really do. If you're doing a roast, you know, pasta, great. Everyone loves pasta. I'm telling you, risotto feels elevated. It doesn't cost a lot. And it tastes yeah. so freaking good. All right. We've got a little lemon here. This is going to season at the end. And then we also have... This is a secret ingredient. Some paprika? Well, chili powder. Oh, chili powder. Now, I do want to say, I know sometimes I can get a little confusing when you hear chili powder of just like, well, wait, which one should I buy? Something to know is that most stores across the country, when you have chili powder, is that McCormick kind of standard of identity of um, flavor profile and heat level. So it's usually pretty standard. It's kind of just savoriness. What and do you mean, stand, like what heat level are you talking about? It's not going to be cayenne. Yeah, cayenne will so, put you on your butt. So usually yeah. when you see something, it just says chili powder, which this is. Again, we're talking about our standard kind of brands like you see at the grocery store. It's like a 3 out of 10 on the heat level. Yeah. Maybe a 2 out of 10. So that's the kind of chili powder they're talking about. If you use something like Chipotle, you want to try that here, go for it. No. Smoky. No ancho, chipotle, they're going to be smoky. Yeah. If you're going to do something cayenne or something uh, with a lot more heat, that's just something to be aware of. So if you, like, what am I, what does that mean, chili pepper? That actually, it, or chili powder, that actually is not pepper, powder. So that's why, yeah, so it's kind of something just like, wait, 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 what do I, yeah. that's so, it's such a range. Like, when you go to McCormick, there's just one that says chili powder. That's what... I feel it coming right now. I feel us diving a little bit deep and going down a rabbit hole on spices for a second. Um, I just, I just feel it coming. Go and say it. Speak the truth. Well, I just want to say, yeah, this, I'm speaking the truth. You guys, when I get to people's homes, they very rarely invite me over for dinner. No one cooks for a chef. I know. It's, very, it's a very sad us. move. But anyways, nobody cooks. When for they us. rarely do, or they order pizza and I'm at their house, nine out of ten times they'll bring out the chili flakes or they'll have some spice going. And I ch always check their spices. I'll like, I know this seems a little bit sketchy, yeah. but like I'll open their spices and just smell them. I'm just weird like that. I'm telling you, after about six months, they're dead. Yeah. I don't mean they're going to poison you. You're not going to die. If yeah, you let's eat clarify months. that. Yeah, you're please. not, you're not going to die. But they lose their moxie. They lose their love. They lose their potency after about six months. And they really have nothing left. So couple of ways that you can do this. Number one, you can always store your, your spices in the fridge or the freezer. Mm. It preserves them for about a year, so it doubles their life, which is really nice. Two, you can always get fresh spices. Those of you who've taken class with me, a fresh spice, so like a mm. fresh dried chili that you grind, you can go get one of those coffee grinders and just use them for spices. That's why Guess I how long them. fresh spices last? Ooh. So again, dry spices are Ooh. about six months. I know a lot of people know the answer because I've said this before. But guess how long fresh spices, meaning like whole cloves, whole cinnamon, and you grind them when you need them. Throw it in the chat. Let's see. What do we got? A year, Rosabelle said. What else? Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. Forever. You guys, 20 years. I'm going to repeat that. Six months, if it's already ground, 20 years. Okay. My kid will graduate college by then. Buy whole spices. Yeah. It makes so much sense for not wasting, for using it when you need it. They're so much more flavorful and alive. So it's worth it. You can grind the spices in something like a molto that has the power to do it. But go and grind your own spices. It makes a big difference. I know that seems like a lot, but I'm telling you. All right, I got 30 seconds left. You don't even know how long you I have left, but we can much. try it. Let's try it. Let's see where we're Here's at. Your spoon. Can I also tell you my biggest spice pet peeve? Okay. Don't store them right next to the oven. Why? Because heat mm. will denature the spices. They'll make them lose their moxie faster. Okay. Guys, this is where we start getting really nerdy. Now this is... We need everyone to just kind of hold tight. As we just see tight. all the screens go black <laughs> yeah, and everyone, everyone leaves. Yeah, everyone just leaves. <laughs> yeah. It's good. I think we're at like 80. We're at 80. We're almost there. That but loading you're, bar. You're done. Well, am I Are done? You? I need three, two... One, <gasps> bingo, done, says it right there. So let's take a look. I'll, I'll be determined if it needs more time or less. 
Ooh, it looks pretty freaking perfect. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that is the texture oh my of gosh. love right there. Now, uh, can Jenny, can you put yours right next to mine? Yeah, let's compare these textures. So I want you guys to see the textures at this point. Okay. So hers, you can see a little bit less, uh, I would say, I don't know what the right word, velvety? Yeah. Uh, I think this is the right texture. It should feel, and I can tell you, we're going to show you on the plate. Not that you're not right there, Jenny, but you, you're a little bit stock light right now. So her rice is just soaking it up. So she's just still, you're in your final little I'm in my here. final But we're going to show push. you how to plate it. When you plate it, there's a test, and I'll show you what the difference is there. But we do want to season it. So this is the time that you want to grab your spoon. Do not add salt. Do not add cheese. Do not add butter. Nothing. And just try it as is. Try mine, Jenny. Oh, is this, is this going to be a moment? It's just one of those things where you're like, how does it know to stop exactly when it's al dente? Because Chef Jamie is amazing. That's kind of nuts. Like you wouldn't, that's like the perfect You moment. didn't stir it at all. I that's didn't even not touch fair. It. <laughs> I've been stirring for 20 minutes. So at this point, I do need a little salt, but we're going to add a little bit of that cheese. Okay. Our chili powder. The rest of that butter, then we're off the heat at this point. Yeah. So it's going to continue to cook. And I'm going to add a little squeeze of lemon. I'm not going to add salt yet. Of course, I could just throw on the lid, but I'm here. I'm just going to stir these in and beat them in. Oh, this looks so good. It comes with this little spatula. I love it. Okay. Amazing. Let's give it a shot again. I really like the chili powder addition. I'm excited to try it. Okay. Chili? Yeah. Lemon? Ooh, that chili powder is good. Yeah, it's a good, good, nice addition. When you add the cheese to it, it immediately gets a little thicker, but also it has a little salt in it. So you don't need as much salt as you think. That's why you add the salt last. But you're in the good graces of two chefs. Mm -hmm. So you know salt is about to hit this risotto. I mean... So I'm going to go with a big pinch. Where are you at? I need a big pinch, too. I got you. Can you go? I'm See, still we're not competitive. I'm, sti I'm still stirring over here, so I could use a hand. It looks great. I mean, it's really it good. Once that chili hit with the... I'm stirring now, too. Yay. <laughs> we're in the same boat. I love it. I love it. All right. Mm. My texture could not be more perfect. I want you guys to know what that finished texture is, but let me just give it one more taste. I have to make sure it's seasoned right. Mm. It's so good. Something it's about so good. like the butter and the cheese. I need more salt, but once yes. it hits, it's just. It's so good. <sighs> There's a reason why I love risotto, people. There's a reason. All right. Mm -mm, so, mm -mm, mm -mm. a couple things to note. Now is where you really want to be aware of the texture. The texture, my chefs used to always tell me in Italy, applesauce. Oh. Applesauce. Very different Apple than mashed sauce. potatoes. Yeah. Okay. So mashed potatoes, too thick, too gloopy, too not enough liquid. Applesauce, a little runny, almost on the verge of a stew is what you would call it. So I want to look at Chef Jenny's texture here. We're going to do a little side by side. And again, Jenny did an amazing job. So it's not like her risotto is Thank any you. worse than, than the Molto's risotto. But do you want to just kind of show texture over here? Yeah. Plate it up. Yeah, well, let's just put textures next to each other real quick. It's just... Yeah. So you can really see, like, mine really, really soaked into those mushrooms. The lid was on, almost like pressure cooked. Yeah. Perfect grains, a little bit more color because it really took it on. Jenny's looks amazing, right? But again, a little thicker, not as runny. So, you know, if, I, if it was my risotto, I would add a little bit, but that looks great. So right there. At this right point, there. I like mine a little thicker. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to yeah. pour mine onto a plate. And this is the risotto test. You do yours. The risotto test is can you pick up your plate and it shakes and flattens out? Which Ooh. I think we're both going to be in good company here. So you ready? ready to give a shot? Yeah. <laughs> that is the risotto test. If you're at the at a restaurant 
and you shake the plate, and it's in a mold that looks like a canoe, or not a canoe, uh, <laughs> uh, what are the tents? Teepees? Teepees. Yeah, there you go. I've seen them come like cone-shaped. I'm like, oh my gosh, I I'm setting it. this back right now. I can't eat it. It has to sit flat like this. This is the right way. We can top it with a little bit of that beautiful cheese. Yeah. Mm. You could even do a little cracked pepper. The mushrooms just kind of melted into it. I, and Listen, we really usually say, like, the dishes still come out the same. I will say in this case, the risotto yeah. and also the green really pop from the molto versus doing it at home. We haven't done a side-by-side. -side. No. So, I, think I don't know. It, your, it's interesting. The blender was so much more powerful that it just pulls that green so much. I need a little more cheese. Before we dive in... Always important, like a lasagna, let them hang for a sec. Yeah. Let them just like give them a minute. You don't want to just spoon lava into your mouth, right? So just give them a minute mm. just to kind of settle. Any questions before we face plant into some results? Because we're going to be gone after that. <laughs> it's going to be really yeah, hard. Yeah, then, then the wine It's going to be really hard to get yeah. a hold of us after that. Also, I like a little olive oil over the top, but questions. Ooh, olive oil. Yes, please. Anyone? Everyone's wondering when the patches are going to be for sale. Oh, my oh gosh. Oh, my gosh. Look what you it. started. All right. All right. I'll, I'll have to come back with an answer on that. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a joke, but kind of not. I'm excited kind of to hear not. It. All right, you guys, adventure. real quick, I want to show you just another view here. Look how pretty this is. Mm -hmm. That with a beautiful, I don't know, roast duck with some lamb chops. I was thinking lamb chops. Oh, my That's gosh. Nice it's really pretty. Are we Scallops? doing cheers? Is that cheers. what we're doing? Well, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. I'll yeah, cheers with cards. I want to try yours and mine. I'd pay like forty dollars for that, and it's rice in stock. All right, let's switch. Let's switch. Mmm. Mmm. They're both really good. They're both really good. Something I mean, they're they're very similar, but I would say mine got a little more depth. There's something that happened in there. I didn't do much. I didn't <laughs> There's stir something it or that anything. happened in there. <laughs> it's There's really good. There's something that happened in there. Mm. Also notice, mm. when you take a bite, it doesn't run together. Ooh. So it's not like the Red Sea. It keeps its line. That's a very good sign that your risotto is the right texture. If it just swoops back together, it's too thin. It's too thin. You guys, this is your last chance. I'm calling it out. Any questions? While we're waiting for questions, Kaya might come with them. This was literally the most quiet group ever, but that's cool because risotto does have that special power over you. Remember, go to their website, cookingpal.com. The actual link is in the chat. It's called the Molto. They're coming out with a lot of new products this year, so get obsessed with them. And remember, the code is gift with HM. So homemade, gift with HM, $80 off. $80 off, it saves you 10 up to 10, really does much more, but 10 appliances in the yeah. kitchen, saves you time, energy, prep, the whole gamut. Now, speaking of saving you time. Yes. And we already said time so much in this program, but on December 15th, in two weeks, exactly today, so Thursday in two weeks, we are dropping our first course. We have, no joke, over a thousand people <gasps> signed up. You guys. To pre-order pre the course. This is called Homemade in a Hurry. Um, it's an amazing gift opportunity. It's perfect for you in the new year if you want to cook more from scratch and you're strapped for time, which we all are. Um, it's not so much about recipes. There are five incredible recipes, but it's not about recipes. It's about what you do at home to change the game, to cook faster but still cook from scratch. You pick up new approaches, new lenses, new ways of looking at the yeah. kitchen and you're going to start one way you're going to start a little slower and by the end of the course you're going to be like i am zooming yeah i am a speed horse in the kitchen so check it out homemade in a hurry we're going to put the link in the chat so if you're interested in signing up keep an eye out for that but every tuesday we're going to send you guys a, a new little tip around yeah. time saving and you can sign up through that email as I well i mean we we did the we did our service in the kitchens getting yelled at to go faster for you, and now, now you don't have to do that. We'll just we've transferred it all to the recipes yes. and to the video. More importantly, to the videos. It's so. a great course. You guys will love it. So, homemade in a hurry, December fifteenth, and we want to thank Cooking Pal and the thank Molto you, team, Pal. Jamie, everyone, Shital, 
everyone who supports us in this. We want to thank you guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. We usually don't go live on Monday. But on Monday, we're back with Fulton Fish. We love Bull them. Booyah base. Booyah base. base. I'm Bullya cooking. Booyah base. That's all we got to say. See you then. Hi, everyone.